Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on the Be Mobile Rouse Show. I'm Jerry, and as always, joined by my associate, Jeremy, here to discuss today inventory control. Um, this is episode two of our inventory control series designed to answer our customers' questions on how we can help automate inventory control. And that's really one of the, the big topics and main reasons why companies search out Be Mobile is they really need help automating the inventory control process, not only transfers from warehouse to warehouse, but transfers uh, from warehouse to truck from an inventory control perspective. And not using a system like Be Mobile, that is a very manual process, something that's done after the fact you're not getting uh, real-time inventory information and takes a long time to process that. Um, so that's one of the beauties of B-Mobile is automating that process and giving you that real-time uh, data that you can look at throughout the day, uh, saving you time and understanding where you're at with inventory. So, uh, so Jeremy, let's get right into it. Let's kind of break it down. How would somebody do inventory transfers without B-Mobile and then what are the options of controlling that and automating that inside of B-Mobile? Great question. So yeah, without a system like ours where we're controlling inventory from a truck perspective and you're using an in the accounting in system, no matter what it is, QuickBooks or, or above, the only way to transfer inventory is for someone to get on a desktop and to move inventory by doing a transfer. So it's, it's kind of a simple answer. Um, Inventory transfers are pretty common in an accounting system. You define the, the from warehouse and the to warehouse, and you define the items you're moving from here to here. Um, certainly, some ERPs have a, a more sophisticated solution with a warehouse management system that can perform transactions and transfers via handheld. But it is meant for in the four walls perspective, and that transfer isn't necessarily calculated. That's one thing we certainly do, which we'll talk about in a minute. But you know, what is it that the truck needs to fulfill today's work and help the driver create that transfer by taking acceptance of what he's leaving with and maybe some supervisory accountability for that, that transfer as well. So pretty simple first question, how do you do it in an ERP? You create an inventory transfer, whether that be on a desktop or a handheld, uh, depends on how sophisticated your system may, may or may not be. Um, and one thing to note is if you are using QuickBooks, you have to have their advanced inventory, which is part of QuickBooks Enterprise. So you'd be kind of cognizant that you're not going to be able to do this with Pro and Premier. Okay, makes sense. So yeah, question number two, how would we automate that process using B-Mobile? Great question. So there's a few different steps in B-Mobile. So we'll walk through this uh, from a slide perspective, and then we'll go in to demonstrate how some of the automation works using, utilizing the device and how it communicates to calculate loads out and, and some other factors. But mm -hmm. in, in first, the first way to do it is very similar to the accounting system. We have an inventory transfer screen that you can define the from and the to warehouse and a list of items you want to move from warehouse one to two. We see that happening with people that are using possibly goods and maybe segregating the warehouse into a freezer and fresh product. And they might be, or a cage versus um, versus the, the warehouse floor. They might be doing that work inside of our desktop to just move things around that maybe are, are needing to be secured or, or set aside for a particular reason and they want to track it differently even though it's not really truly going from a one a fiscal warehouse to another <laughs> fiscal warehouse. Um, that's probably the most common use. But a, a desktop screen that can be accessed by the office or by the warehouse person with a PC to create a warehouse transfer. That's number one. Okay. Number two is, as we know, with our current version, we, we do what we call start of day, end of day. Start of day says, here's what I need to do to perform the work for today. Um, I accept a load, I do my, my uh, truck inspection, I'm doing things in that process, I'm signing out, and then and that in turn creates a transfer for the items that you say that you're leaving with uh, on that uh, on your load sheet. So acceptance of a load creates a transfer, and the transfer is from the truck's depot, assigned depot, 
to the truck itself for the items that you're accepting. So that's the first automated piece of the puzzle. By, by the driver accepting his load, he is therefore creating a transfer automatically in the system. Okay. Okay. The second thing is driver's out in the field and runs out of product in the middle of the day and has to come back to re reload his, his truck. He would not end his day and, and reload. He would just do a, what we call a midday pick or an adjustment. And that midday pick or an adjustment would create a transfer, either increasing the, increasing the truck from the warehouse or depleting the truck from the warehouse. So the example there is I have too much product. I just need to get rid of it to make room for other product that I need. I can do okay. a transfer back or I can do a transfer to my truck uh, from that functionality on the, on the device. Does that make sense so far? It does. All right, and the third, the third place that transfers are modified and or cre created and then modified are um, at the end of day. So at the end of day, so I've kind of wrapped up everything for my day. I'm again, going through a physical count of my truck I'm counting up what I'm bringing back and what's possibly being unloaded. So in a lot of our customers' um, scenarios, they're returning product in the field, something that expired. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna keep the five items that are good on my truck and, and use those tomorrow. But the two that I took back in the field throughout the day, I would automatically unload uh, as part of, a, part of my process. So the end of day captures all that information and creates those transfers. And then subsequently, we'll create a transfer from the truck to the warehouse and then possibly the warehouse to a secondary warehouse. A lot of product um, that is expired or damaged goes into sort of a bad warehouse or almost literally the trash can, but we can kind of get rid of the, the items through an automated process there as well. So they're not affecting on our, our on-hand quantities at the, uh, at the item and warehouse level. But... Um, the uh, also kind of being created there is not a transfer, but it goes in line with this workflow is an adjustment. And an, an adjustment says, I have, I, I should have come back with 10, but I came back with nine. You know, I got hungry in the middle of the day and ate it. I lost it. I did, I gave it to a customer for a sample, but didn't record the transaction. You know, whatever that, that reason is, we are off on inventory. And assuming that you're doing a physical count, we're going to, take that, that one in this example, 10 versus nine, and we're gonna create a physical adjustment for the main warehouse that this truck is compared, is created from or, um, or tied to, to deplete inventory by the one, because in, in total, we are not transferring back what we think we should. We're transferring back 10, but we're doing an adjustment for one to bring that inventory back down. So those are all the transactions that can be created. Oh. Now, the end of day has a secondary component to it, which is a settlement process. So on the desktop, someone says, okay, now I'm ready to review the work that the driver has done. I'm ready to kind of wrap it up and get it ready to send to, uh, to the accounting system. If any changes are, there, are done on that screen, then adjustments are made to those, those warehouse transfers and or uh, adjustments based on information that's kind of updated and corrected within the system at that point in time. We're not going to go through that today. We'll, we'll kind of hit this at a high level today, but, but those are all the different places that adjustments, um, warehouse transfers and adjustments are created through just through the use of the device in, in the field and in the warehouse. Okay. Any questions on any of that? No, uh, that, that makes perfect sense. I love the idea of using the Android device, not only to, you know, streamline the process and, and save everybody time. But like, like you said, there kind of adds another layer of control and holding the driver accountable with what they should be coming back with on the truck. That, that's fantastic. Yeah, certainly our system help really does help that accountability. And that's one of, one of our um, kind of stamps is if, if you really want control, you have to count it at the beginning of the day, you have to count it at the end of the day and you have to maintain it throughout the day. So, by doing that, you'll have up-to-date inventory. But if you if you let it slack, you may end up with off, and then you'll end up doing a lot of physical counts. And at the end of a month or end of a week, which will create adjustments, which are not what we want because 
we're ending up with a lot of adjustments that means transactions are bad or we're losing inventory to, for other reasons. Right. Right. Very good. So let's let's go into um, let's jump out of here and we'll go into our desktop side of things and show you just a little bit of what our screens look like. This is the inventory transfer screen that's on the desktop. So all I do is um, create a transfer from warehouse one to SL one, and I would choose an item that I want to transfer. So I'm going to transfer some organic carrots, quantity of 100, and I would hit save, and that creates a transfer from warehouse one to that, and increases quantities. When you look at an inventory item, kind of underneath the sheets. That inventory item has the on-hand quantities that are built up in each one of the, the warehouses and the trucks. Again, kind of going back to part one of our conversation or part one of our session was one thing that's also unique from a B-Mobile perspective is trucks in our environment can be what we call non-ERP warehouses. So we can track the total on-hand quantities and, and all the transfers that are happening within B-Mobile and keep a very dynamic system going on without littering the ERP with all that data, but keeping it on our side. So in this scenario, that's what I have going on. Um, okay. These, these are three trucks that are in our system with one main warehouse. And right now the total on hand is obviously off, but um, I can track what's going on in the truck and we'll see that change as we uh, do our load here in a second. So that's warehouse transfer on the desktop. Any questions there, Jerry? No, that makes sense. Thank you. All right. So on the device, um, B-Mobile device, if you're not familiar, we're kind of going to work down this ladder. So we're going to start the day, then we're going to do an adjustment, and then we're going to do end of day. That's, we'll kind of skip the things in the middle for now. But uh, I would choose start a day. It's going to communicate to the server and bring me up the, the latest list of routes, and I would choose a route and a truck. So I'm going to work the DR route. I'm going to be James T. Kirk today. Um, I'm going to use the DR truck for today's data. I'm going to say get data. The very first thing it's doing um, is it's saying based on the date and based on the truck and based on the route that and based on a configuration, it says based on the customers that I need to see, orders that are in the system or a projected order, here's what I need in inventory on my truck to fulfill today's work. And obviously, in this particular case, my, my screen's going to blank saying I don't have any formula that got calculated, so I'm just going to add some items to the, the list. So we'll add some bread in this case. We'll add 11, 22, and 2. So I'm going to add these particular items to my load, and that's what I'm leaving the warehouse with. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go through my truck inspection, make sure my truck's good to drive today. And then it's going to go to my signature. And if you have some controls in place, maybe the warehouse manager signature. And I would save that and then it take me to some notes, make sure I clean out my truck tonight because it's going in for maintenance. And based on finishing that process, what, what we call start of day, it has not created a warehouse transfer in the system. So if I go back to the desktop, and I'm just going to go to what we call end of day settlement. Let me refresh the screen. And here's my route. Save it on truck. And here's the inventory transfers that happened to my truck then today. So 11.5, we from the crew was created because the DR route started, did a start of day. Um, here's the item, the old fashioned sourdough, 11 units from warehouse one to the truck. And that's what will be ultimately either kept on our side for the day because we're not linking that to a VRP or it is ultimately teed up to send to the accounting system if you want to keep it down at that level uh, more dynamically. Either, either okay. is fine. Does that process make sense? Makes perfect sense. Love that it's real time. So yeah, so now if, if we go to back the inventory and go to sourdough, over a sourdough, you'll see the on hand quantity for the DR truck is 1185 total. Uh, certainly, my numbers look a little wacky, but uh, 
um, but you can get a sense of the numbers that would be associated to the truck level compared to the main level. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the device. So the other thing that would happen is, let's say I'm running out of particular product, um, 11 units of that sourdough, um, and I needed 10 more of those. I would say I want to increase from route the truck, um, so that I would do a warehouse transfer, um, increasing my quantity from, from 10 to, to 21, and I would save that, oh, not search. Say that it would ultimately want to print out a receipt if I'm forcing the print out of that for my paperwork, um, which this is going to bunk because I don't have a printer hooked up this device. And it creates that transfer, and that transfer is sent back to the warehouse. And we ultimately should see it on the day again. There's my transfer of 12, 22 units or 11 units. Sorry, 10 units that we just did. So midday picks are, are done as an adjustment on the device that transfer either up or down from the warehouse to the truck uh, in completion. Okay. Okay. So far, so good? Good. All right, so then we go on to... Um, Certainly depletion happens by invoice and the customer. That's going to be our next session is the out. So far we've done the ins in part one. We're working on transfers in part two and the outs will be part three and then we'll go on from there. Okay. Um, from an end of day perspective, I would now do my fiscal count on the device. I, I have should have 21. If I have 20, 20 instead of 21, this is my physical count that will create an adjustment. Um, and if I'm unloading product, I would unload at this point as well. Uh, any product I want to get rid of, I'm going to unload 20 of those. And uh, of course, some expenses, and I'm going to sign again, but coming back in the warehouse. Warehouse manager is going to sign, taking accountability that he's counted as well. And I'm going to send invoices and end my day. Now I'll create those flaps and transfers and adjustments as well. So the device is done as far as this is concerned. And then there's the uh, warehouse transfers and adjustments going on. This particular screen only shows inventory transfers, not adjustments, um, but you can see from a product perspective, I came back one shy, and I'm this by this being on this screen, it's going to create that adjustment for the main warehouse of one unit. Because we said we took 21, so it depleted it out. We came back, and we said we only had 20, so something happened to one of those uh, sourdough loaves. I see. Does that make sense? It does. Makes perfect sense. All right, that, that concludes... Uh, the demonstration of transfers. Our next topic will be outs. And from there, we'll go to warehouse management, which will be some uh, fiscal counts and uh, picking processes that we'll hit we'll upon. Anything Excellent. else around yeah, transfers? Think, uh, no, I think that hits it all. Thank you very much for that, Jeremy. And it, and it looks like B-Mobile is a great solution to help automate inventory control and give you uh, additional security levels to make sure that you're holding people accountable and making sure you're you know what's going on with your inventory so so that is fantastic and thank you for everybody who joined in and, and uh, if we didn't answer your question please type into the comments below and we'll get those answered for you um, keep your eyes peeled for that next session episode three of inventory control and uh, appreciate you again taking the time and uh, until then have a good day